Let love explode and bring the dead to life I love so bold to see a revolution somehow Let love explode and bring the dead to life I love so bold to see a revolution somehow And now I'm lost I'm Kim. And I'm Melissa. And, and we're, we're going to help you circle back, back to God. God. Um, well, today we got quite a show because we're not going to be scripted. We're going off the rails. So Woo! if we offend you, if you think you're offended, please turn the channel. Go to something else because I'm not holding back any longer. This world is falling worse than it has already. But for before we get into any of the um, topics that are... Um, they're gonna go woo! Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll keep it nice and child friendly. But yes, uh, <laughs> I will go ahead and pray for us, and then we'll get on to the conversation at hand. Uh, Lord, I ask that you um, watch over this country, watch over the world, help people get back to you, show them that you are the way, you are the life. You know, you sent your son here to save us from ourselves, from our sins. But Lord, all I see is everybody sitting around us. Can you just help us find a way back to you? In all this, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so the topics we're going to cover today is the trans, uh, transgender and the Pride Month. Okay? It's everywhere. The other one we're going to cover is the critical race theory. Also everywhere. Then, yes, this topic's going to be hard for everybody because I don't know if... Uh, how people agree or disagree on this, but the BLM, the Black Lives Matter movement, okay? We'll be discussing that. And then something that I heard at church today kind of got me. Uh, we're doing a, uh, we did a series on grief, and I thought of this as something interesting. It's the grief of losing our rights, our American rights. And you might not see it, but it is happening little by little. Mm -hmm. So we're going to move on to the transgender thing. I know we covered this before. Um, I do feel bad for the ones that do have the um, gender dysphoria, where they do believe that they're a different gender in the wrong body. Um, I do feel bad for those people, but it is only a percentage. It right. is not as many as the people out there are making it to be. But what really makes me angry, and it's because I have small kids, the gender thing is, the, the transgen and pride month is on almost everything on Nickelodeon. Mm-hmm. If you turn on Blue's Clues and you see that parade, the Pride Parade, and they're singing that song about two mommies, two daddies, I just really wish we could go back to the Bible and look, it's supposed to be man and wife, and when they become one flesh. Right, Melissa? Yeah. Kids don't need to hear about this. They no, really don't. No, not they're six too year olds. And young. Yeah. They're too young to hear about and that. And the whole thing about transgender and Pride Month, too, it's not... I mean, yes, the gender and everything, but the thing, too, it's its all about sexuality and sex. Right. They're too now, young for that. What kid needs to hear that? Mm-hmm. I have a two-year-old, and I was telling Melissa last week, I said, I will not put on TV and walk out of the room. I want to watch what he's watching before he watches it, so I know it's something I agree with. I never used to be like that. But now it's come to the part where I don't want him brainwashed thinking he can turn from a boy to a girl. I that want way. him to make the decision on his own if ever that ever happens. But I don't want him to think, oh, well, everybody's doing it. I might as well do it too. Exactly. So, um, and she's helping. She babysits him a lot. She knows how I feel about cartoons and stuff. So she also watches it with him to make sure it's something appropriate. So. Mm-hmm. Um, because I do believe that it should be a man, a woman, and children, or whatever, but not a woman and a woman. 
I mean, I joke all the time, it'd be nice to have extra women in the house to help care for the house, but not to share my man. My man is my man. <laughs> exactly. And, and my be, man is my man. Exactly. It should be one woman, one man, under God. Exactly. You know, and that's how it should be. And that's a huge topic. Uh, my son actually just watched a commercial yesterday. It was um, on the Oreo commercial. They had a pride uh commercial for Oreo too. It's everywhere. My kids can't I, I had um a commercial for that one lady that was she's not a lady. That one dude that was singing the um blues clue song. She okay. was on an ad for a bunch of um like care products and stuff and I'm like I turned the ad because I'm like this is just thrown into our face. You know? I wanna go back to the T V shows where the man and the wife slept in different beds. Like Leave It to Beaver and, and I Love Lucy. Witch. I think, no, I Love Lucy, they had the, did they have the same bed? I can't remember. That might have been one of the first ones that they shared a bed. I can't remember either. But yeah, the, the old shows where they had different beds, you know, because right. on TV, they didn't show that. Exactly. It was respectful because in the bedroom, it's supposed to be private. Exactly. And now it's just thrown into our face. Everywhere you look, that's all you see is sex and yeah, making out. And it's just like, it's there. And it's like... I want to go back to the time, even though I wasn't even born this time. I want to go back to the time where a girl got really, really excited for a guy taking her hand. Exactly. Now it's a girl gets really, really excited if uh, a guy goes third base with her. Mm -hmm. And that's just not cool. It's mm -hmm. like, I want to go where we get, you know... We get excited about a phone call from a guy oh, yeah. or a note from a guy. <sighs> I miss high school. Not me. I know. But getting a note from a guy in front of your friends is like, it was awesome. You know? Right. You know, and that was just what, how many years ago was that? Oh my goodness, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like that feeling, you know, and, mm -hmm. and now look at it. It's like, it's all flaunted, you know, and... I won't even go on the one thing that I see right. at the school. I won't even touch base on that. But um, I wanted to all let you guys know, too, that because of all the stuff that's shoved into my kids' face, I have decided that I'm homeschooling my kids um, without public school's help. I'm paying for it next year, and I'm doing time for learning, um, only because they don't need to know this stuff. They're too young to know this stuff. I, I know I have a 16-year-old, and she sees it, and she kind of understands it, but I don't want her to have a teacher telling her what she should and should not believe. And on that, I'm moving on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. Another reason uh, I'm homeschooling is because of the critical race theory. And if you guys don't know what that is and I feel like I'm talking fast, slow down. I'm a little perturbed with these issues. That's Just why That's why we're doing off script, having a conversation. I feel like I'm talking a lot and I'm, I apologize for that. Oh, don't worry. Talk to our viewers. Tell them how you feel. But the critical race theory, I was just telling Melissa what that is, Basically, the critical race theory is going back, looking at our race and racism, and basically saying that whites are evil and we're white supremacists and that uh, we should be put down, put down, put down for everything that we do because of the color of our skin. Now, if that's not racism, I don't know what is. And who comes up with all this stuff, really, is beyond me. Yeah, and um, if you look at it, too, it's like they're trying to get rid of racism, but this adds to racism. It really does. It yes. adds to it. If they're trying to get rid of it, then why are they doing the critical race theory? Yeah. And it's in schools everywhere. Kids are actually standing up for this. Mm -hmm. You should um, pull up on YouTube, critical race theory, and then put, like, kids in it. These kids are standing up to their teachers. Mm -hmm. I watched so many videos in the last week. Um, there was a nine-year-old saying they didn't want politics in school. And there was a BLM poster. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's politics. Right. So why is there a BLM poster in their school if they don't want politics in school? And this right. nine-year-old caught it. You know, our kids are smarter than you think. They really are. And if you lie to them, they're just not going to trust adults. They're not going to trust their elders. Exactly. You know? And that's not what you want. You want them to trust you. You want them... Exactly. To... Um... Respect as well. Yes. Because mm -hmm. respect goes both ways. It it's does. a two-way street. It does. And I know back in the day, and I know again before this was my time, but um, 
they used to say children should be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with that anymore. I right. totally believe a child has the right to share their opinion. Mm -hmm. And I also believe that something shouldn't be shoved down their face. Right. You know? Especially like this. This stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, critical race theory is taught. You're exactly. not going with it. No. Um, I did have... Uh, my mom was racist for a little while because she lost her job. You know? But she's not anymore. Right. And she was just mad because she lost her job. And then, you know, I live in a very diverse neighborhood i mean uh -huh. very and i love it and my kids get to see the different colors of skin but we don't look at the people like that they're just our neighbors right and they're sweet i i live like by a whole bunch of elderly you know people and they're i sat on the porch with one of them and talked for 45 minutes with them you know uh -huh. i mean that's what we need to do we need to sit on the porch with people even if it's different color skin and have conversations and not see the skin, but yeah. see the person. Yep. Personality counts big time. Right. Yeah. Look beyond the skin and see the person for who they are. Exactly. And not the skin color. Exactly. And the only reason um, God changed everything is because we were trying to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. If you guys remember the story of the Tower of Babel, I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. You know, I, that's one of my favorite stories of the Bible. Oh, yeah. So, um, and we, we talked about that, my son and I, the other day, and he's like, we were talking about the Tower of Babel, and he's like, so if he didn't do that, we would all understand one another. I said, yes, we would. Mm -hmm. But we were trying to take the cheap way and get to heaven. Right. So, but, uh, yeah, I, I always look at people's personalities, you know, and stuff like that. And I think my kids are getting there now, too, because where we came from, it was mostly a white neighborhood. Now it's mostly a black neighborhood, so we get to see that difference, you know, and it's right. really nice for them to grow up like that because racism, hate, um, negativity are all taught. Yes. They are, they're learned behaviors. They're not born with it. Mm-mm. Because so, if you look at a little kid, you always see love in that little kid until they're taught. Yep. Yep, exactly. Now, I, I teach my kids, uh, you know, don't trust anyone only because I'm not putting fear in them mm -mm. I'm teaching them to look for their surroundings not to go with any just stranger they meet or whatever like that right they're learning how to uh discern discern between good behavior bad behavior if somebody's acting funny to look for right. those behaviors you know um but other than that i let my kids walk to the store and stuff and buy their own snacks and whatnot so because i want to teach them independence too and they both always have their phones on them they mm -hmm. never, you know, leave the house without their phone. If anything were to happen, they can call me right away. So Right. Um, the next topic on our list is uh, the BLM. Um, that stands for Black Lives Matter. And, yes, I believe that. But what's huge is all lives matter. In the mm -hmm. eyes of God, every single life matters. So the BLM is basically, you know, they set riots. And they, they get... Everybody riled up, you know, at protests, and then murder happens, and everything. And if you watch the news, you'll see it. It's everywhere. Um, I've only been watching the news to catch up on stuff because I, I really need to know what's going on in our country. Mm -hmm. I really need to know because um, my livelihood depends on it. I have kids. Um, I get Social Security, and if they're going to cut that, I need to know so I can have right. backup plans. So, yes, I've been watching the news. And gas prices have been going up, so I want to see if they're going to go up any higher. Right. Um, but God said it where all lives matter, even the unborn children. Mm-hmm. Um, and Melissa matters. Her cats matter. My um, kitties. Yep. Uh, and now, what's going to happen when blacks... And the whites who have babies, and they're both black and white. So what's going to happen to those? They're going to be divided. They're they're gonna. I mean, right. they're not going to fight with each other, but they're not going to belong. Right. They won't exactly. belong in the black community. They won't belong in the black community. They won't belong in the white exactly. community. Exactly. And that's going to be sad for them because it will be. It will be. And then also, what worries me the most is a race war. Exactly. Like I mentioned before, I live in mostly a black neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I don't see color, and I'm really hoping that my neighbors will respect me and my property. But right. But if, if it comes down to it, because the media is pushing this in our face. Right, if exactly. If it comes down to a race war or a... Uh, or that they're so feared, because fear is a big... Oh, it is. It's a big 
thing that they do to people. It pushes people to do irrational stuff. Yes. Yeah, I know. Um, I'm not so much afraid of all this stuff that's coming out. I'm more irritated. Yes, But I too. am afraid of the people that don't believe mm-hmm. and don't read their Bible like yes. they should. I am afraid of people that have not accepted Jesus, and if it is time mm-hmm. for the end, they'll be stuck here. Yes. So I would like to pass all this on to you folks and try to try to warn people, but do it in a sane way. I mean, don't go around holding up signs saying, repent like you see in movies, <laughs> because... You might get shot. (laughs) Who knows? Right. You don't know what's going to happen. And that's why Melissa and I, we started this back in April to help you through a camera lens. Uh, So we're kind of safe, but trying to get the word out there that we need to stand up for our country. We need to stand up for Jesus and God because nobody is. God is. And that's another thing that scares Mm -hmm. me. They're changing so much. What if it comes down to it with um, taking our freedom of religion away? Exactly. Like other countries, they have to hide their Bibles. Exactly. You know? They do. Yeah, exactly. They have to hide their Bibles. They're like, burning down churches yeah, in some everywhere. areas. And it's like, mm-hmm. if you practice uh, Christianity in China, you're dead. Mm-hmm. You, like, can't even, you know, and it scares me. You know, I don't want America to be like that. And exactly. that comes to the next thing. It's like, I'm having grief with all of our stuff being taken away. Like, we mentioned, you know, back in April about Dr. Seuss, our literature. Right. Our literature is being... It, it reminds me of Hitler. Right. Burning the books. What's mm-hmm. what's the difference, people? And then, you know, um, with uh, the media, too, um, our social media, you can't post certain things or you'll be taken down. Right. You know? Um, I can't talk about vaccines on this channel and what I believe in them. Right. I can't talk about... Um, the election and what I believed in that because right. I can be taken down. Exactly. Um, and that suppresses our freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that's right. No. Um, I think anybody has the right to practice what they want to preach, um, all that. So that's our freedom of speech, our mm-hmm. freedom of religion that could be taken away. Um, what else? Um, they're trying to take our guns away. Uh, that hasn't moved forward yet i don't think they're able to so i'm really hoping that one doesn't get touched right but um all this we just need to pray for our country on a daily basis you know um pray for even the world because not just the race theory and the um and the race war i'm worried about it's also world war three a lot of countries are becoming angry with us oh yes most definitely Uh uh-huh um so pray um, pray that we can save as many people and get them back into the word because I think it's disappearing. And that is one thing that should always hold true and hold fast because mm-hmm. the Bible is ever living. Yes. And if you read it today and like actually understand it, you're like, oh, wow, that can apply right now to my situation. Mm-hmm. Just because it was written 2,000 years ago does not mean it still doesn't exist today. Exactly. And it, people always say, well, why under, you know, why do this? Because it was written by man. Yes, it was written by man. But, but it's God, God breathed yeah, but, into the man so exactly. that you could write it. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm sorry, but if you think about it like this for your, you non-believers checking this channel out, um, I'll help you with this. Watch Case for Christ. Mm-hmm. Do research on C.S. Lewis. Those two people, um, what was uh, Case for Christ's name? Lee uh, Strobel. Lee Strobel, yep. Okay, so Lee Strobel and C.S. C- yes, Lewis. Thank you. Those two people were very big atheists until they digged through the Bible, mind you. They dug through the Bible to try to discern it, to try to pick it apart. Mm-hmm. Guess what? They become like Saul became Paul. They mm-hmm. were big advocates for Christianity. Okay, read um, oh the one that C.S. Lewis wrote. Um, help me out here. Um, the Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe. Yes, the whole Narnia uh series. Read that because that is really good. I read that with my son. Now, for you non-believers, just because the Bible was written by man doesn't mean that it's not believable. Think about this: the book is two thousand years old. Christianity is even older than that, okay? Mm-hmm. If it wasn't true, how could it have lasted so long? 
And back in the day, when they wrote the Bible, that paper and pen that they were using, very expensive. They yeah. would not have taken that time and that money. to. And, and some of the right. people that wrote it were not, they, they did not have money. Mm -mm. They were poor. And why would they take the time to write something so necessary and spend that money if it wasn't true? Mm -hmm. That makes my faith right there even stronger when I know all this. Yep. So, spread the word. Any any uh, believers, non-believers, just give love to everybody right now because we're all hurting. I've watched the news. I'm getting so fed up with what's going on in the world, and I just want I want to go into the te television and wring people's necks and right. say, why can't we just go back to the Bible? Mm -hmm. You know? But... I think we'll just have to keep working hard, get our, getting our viewers to read the yes. Bible more. Um, if you have questions about what bi what Bible study to go to, yeah. write us. You know, if you have questions about anything, you we're know. actually doing two Bible studies this yes. uh, this summer. We're doing one on Revelations, and then we're doing one through BSF that was about um, basically preparing us for the Book of Matthew, because that's what mm -hmm. we're doing in uh, September. So, if you have any questions. Or if you want to go along with the Bible study we're doing, I can mm -hmm. send you the information. Yes. So email us. The email, again, if you guys have forgotten, is circle back and the number 2, God, at yahoo.com. And then you can also check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook page is circle back to God. Okay? Um, and then you can always leave a comment here, too. I've noticed that everybody's been silent and everything like that. We want to know what you think. Right, you know, and just, like I said, if I offended you with any of the things I said, I'm sorry, but it needs to be said, and God uh -huh. needs to be put first. Yes. Because he's been putting on the back burner for far too long. Way too long. It does start with God first, and everything else will come first. Everything yeah. else will come um, next. Right. Exactly. God first, and then everything will fall into place. Mm hmm Yep. If you put praying last... And right. worry first, it's going to take time off of your life, you know? Yeah. Worry um, is just like a rocking chair. Gives you something to do, but you never go anywhere. Good quote. Good quote. Okay. So we'll catch you guys back on um, Monday. And, um, yeah. Not Monday, sorry. On Wednesday. I'm a little off on my days here. We'll catch you guys back <laughs> on uh, Wednesday. I hope you have a lovely couple of days. Um, please pa pass this video along, share it to whoever needs to hear it, and, um, hopefully we'll have some more upbeat stuff in a couple of days, but it depends on my mood. Mine too. Yep. It all needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. I'm not keeping quiet no more. You guys have a lovely day. Bye. Bye.